boy, we're going into a little rabbit hole of memories which I did not want to look back on, but you know what? I want to make this video just to give you guys an idea of what kind of roommate not to be, as well as exposing the BS she's done to me. Obviously, I can't give her her real identity for legal reasons, but we'll call her something else. So, I'ma call her... <laughs> she's an ogre. <laughs> Perfect! <laughs> so first year of college, an exciting time. Or it's supposed to be. And the fun of it all is having a roommate for the first time as well. Hooray! <laughs> so, I have one roommate and three suite mates. Basically, other people living in the same apartment, but different rooms. There were three rooms in the apartment, supposed to be totaling to six people, but the room across from us only had one person. So she had the big room all to herself. Strangely, we were two people, but we got stuck in the smallest room and were told they were the same size. Clearly not. Anyways, back to roommates before I get too off topic. But to be honest, when I first met Ogre, we got along fairly well. I trusted her to tell her some things about me, and she was really nice about everything. It was also nice to have another artist friend, as well as other friends I made with her too, which was really nice while it lasted. But, of course... Things come to an end real quick because after a couple weeks things started to change so as you all know last year true became my boyfriend <laughs> so i would like to talk to him on the phone a lot since we're long distance and everything and actually most of my good friends are long distance so i like to chat with him on the phone and have a good time actually we did all talk together with ogre too and we had fun conversations together However, she still prefers a quiet room, so we're already clashing there. There was this one day that really baffled me. I was drawing on my Cintiq quietly. I was on the phone with True, but I wasn't saying anything because she was going into her sleeping mood, so she called it. I was just drawing and enjoying his presence, canceling out the shitty one behind me, and then she turns over. You? Yeah, what's up? Um, I can't sleep. Why, can't get into your sleeping mood? Yeah, it's too bright. Oh, why don't we just add a towel or something to hang to block the light? No, I already feel uncomfortable and cramped. What the? I'll, I'm sorry, princess, you feel cramped, but your space isn't changing with a towel. While my grade will if I don't do this, we share a room, this isn't all yours. Uh, I have this homework due tomorrow, though. Well, I can't sleep. Also, I can hear you clicking with the pen. So you're telling me that I'm drawing too loud or something too? Like, how in the world do you sleep in the loudest city and think my drawing is too loud? Can you maybe leave the room? So I reluctantly left at 12 in the morning. If I was talking loudly, I'd understand. But she felt too much like a princess to even let me stay. It's like she was purposely trying to kick me out of the room. So we try to compromise it emphasis on tried but it wasn't really a good way to do it we made a schedule and the x's are when we both had classes so we wouldn't have the room anyways we tried to split the time evenly according to the hours so during the day she would go to the library or downstairs in the student workplace while i had the room and at night i would go out to talk with my friends so she could sleep in their room i did this at first to keep some kind of peace between us but it's honestly not a healthy relationship with your roommate. Roommates are about learning how to coexist together, not to have time slots when you can have the room. You're both paying for it. It shouldn't be separate times like that. It's also annoying because I had my Cintiq in my room and the time where I was most productive and had the most free time was when I couldn't be in my room to work. So videos were also slow around that time. I stuck to this compromise because she was constantly bothered by my presence in the room. Every time I was going home for the weekend, she was obviously ecstatic to have me out. And when I came back from class while she was there, I could tell how unhappy she was. However, I never had a problem with her calling on the phone or her talking in the room. If she brought a friend, I wouldn't mind either. She would just want me out of the room if her friend was over. I would just stay in the dining area. She was the only one who had this issue. The only reason I'm upset about her being like that was because of how hypocritical she is with her own complaints. So 
Over time, this was only building tension between us because I'd be frustrated that I'm constantly out at night with crazy time schedules while she had her own issues with me. We had one of our first fights eventually while True came to visit regarding her sleeping and her upcoming test. She was having TOEFL tests during that period, so I tried to compromise with her because I understand it's not easy. SATs weren't easy for me either. Those tests aren't something you could just wing. However, she was handling it very selfishly. Talking to my friends and my boyfriend was something to keep me sane while I was in college, and she's expecting me just to be quiet while she's in the room. She heavily victimized herself, as if I were the bad guy who keeps coming into the room and making her life miserable because she decided herself to go to the library since it's a better place to study while I'm in the room. Mind you, I still go out of the room at night to let her sleep, so it's not like she's not getting any at all. If she's a sensitive sleeper, that's not my fault because I still leave the room to let the princess sleep. One thing she said during an argument, word for word, was... I was almost so blown that I asked my parents to look for an apartment outside of school so that I can move out in the second semester. It is also not fair for me. Because why me move out? Don't do this to people. This is manipulative and wrong. Why should you move out? Because you don't like my presence and constantly try to kick me out of the room. That is not my fault, especially when I already follow these rules you made because you don't want me to be in the room as much. And then she replied, My dad thought you were a very polite person. Now I don't know. The first time we ate in a Korean restaurant, it was on him. And he said that you thanked him and bowed to him very politely. That impressed him. But now, knowing all this and my tests are coming up, he doesn't know what to think now. It's like this, you're out because you're talking to your boyfriend and something else like work related. I am out only studying. I did not call. Do you think it is fair? I purely work, but at least 40% of the time, you're on a call. And I'm not saying that you cannot call. It's just, it pisses me and my parents off. This reply really threw me off because I understand she's working hard and doing her best, but she's also going out with friends and doing other fun activities. The only difference is, is that her friends are in person. Now, I'm not saying this to criticize her for hanging out with friends, it's just of how hypocritical she is. We're not robots, we're human beings trying to live. We're in college, we're trying to live our youth while suffering with grades, but that doesn't mean you can't hang out with your friends. Since her friends are in person and mine are online, is going to result in a different kind of social life. She said to me, you are out because I'm with friends. No, I am out because you can't seem to stand me when I'm maintaining a social life to keep myself sane in school and from people like you. So it's not fair at all since I go out for your sake all the time, and for some reason, I'm still a parasite to you. Since I seem like I'm not studying enough to her standards, it's not fair for her. And to top it all off, she said it pisses her and her parents off. Girl, what would you like me to do at this point? She apologized, but honestly, I don't think she meant any of it after the stuff she did later, which I'll get to. She tends to act how her parents tell her to act, so based on that, she most likely apologized to get to my good side and make her look good to keep some sort of image and this so-called peace. I wish I told her off, but I was so thrown off by everything, I just took the bullet and continued to abide by the schedule. Thankfully, True was there for me, but when he went back home, it was time for me to deal with her. And it only got worse, which I'll have to continue to part two, otherwise, it'll get too long. So much drama happened and I gotta say, it was absolutely ridiculous. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It was quite, and I mean quite, <laughs> the time, my god. The next video is gonna be really really dramatic like there's gonna be a lot of drama because a lot happened because we had this whole fight but you know you should you should watch it i'll let you guys know hopefully it'll be out by january or latest early february but i'll make sure it's out I'll make sure it's out so um don't be like ogre ogre sucks uh she go i don't know disappear and <laughs> just don't be like her right? especially in the next video i keep emphasizing it but 
the next video. My god, don't be anything like her. And also, happy almost new year! Today and tomorrow is the last day of 2020. We're not gonna miss you. <laughs> and also, pins are still on sale. You should go check them out. I really, really like how they turned out and they're still there. They're still, they're still in stock. So, I hope you buy some. And yeah, again, happy almost new year. And maybe it's new year when you guys watch this. I don't know. I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>